Hello, in this video, I'm going to be talking about cardiac side effects of a class of chemotherapy called anthracyclines. Before I go on, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to our channel. We put out two to three videos a week, so there's always something new to watch. And as always, go to yerba.com to see your personalized breast cancer report. So the anthracyclines are a type of chemotherapy, and I'll say three of the, the anthracyclines that are most commonly used, doxorubicin, donorubicin, and epirubicin. Depending on what part of the, the world you're in, you may get one of those three. And they're used usually in combination with another type of chemotherapy to decrease the risk of the cancer coming back or in people with advanced disease to treat the breast cancer and try to cause a partial or even a complete remission. In general, the anthracyclines are used for four to six treatments. Sometimes they're given weekly, although that's much less common. They're usually given every two to three weeks and they're given as either an infusion in a little clear bag or through a syringe. The anthracyclines are well known to cause in about 5% of people problems with the heart function. And I'm going to talk, I'm gonna just take a pause for a minute and talk about the multiple things we think about when we think of heart disease. So the heart is a muscle that pumps blood throughout the body and you want that muscle to be nice and strong. You can see with my hands, that's kind of your heart and it's pumping. The other thing when we think about heart disease are the valves or the passageways between the four chambers of the heart. So we have valves that go between the atria and the ventricles, and those keep the less oxygenated blood from going backwards, and they help the blood eject forward into the rest of your body after it, the blood gets oxygenated in, when, it goes, when your blood goes through the lungs. Then there's also the rhythm function of your heart. So we have a rhythm to our heart and it's usually regular. We can have irregular rhythms and those are called arrhythmias or dysrhythmias. And there are many different kinds and we pick those up on an EKG. Valve problems and problems with the pump function of the heart, we generally detect through an echocardiogram or an ultrasound of the heart. There's another test that was actually the original test when we were studying the pump function of the heart called a MUGA test, M-U-G-A. And we'll write what it spells, what it stands for right below. So an echocardiogram or a MUGA test can tell us the function of the heart and an echocardiogram is done to look at the valves. There's some other tests that are done as well. Now the most common cardiac toxicity from the anthracyclines is a decrease in the pump function. Usually this happens with more and more cycles of chemotherapy, which is why we don't generally give above a certain amount in breast cancer. And in fact, the amount most people get in the treatment of breast cancer is well below the threshold for which the anthracyclines are famous at causing heart problems with the pump, pump function problems. So let's say for example, I'm gonna use some numbers here. Somebody gets 240 milligrams per square meter. So I'm about 1.6 square meters. Somebody who's heavier or taller might be two meters squared or 2.2 meters squared. And we dose it based on the body size of the patient. And once you get over 350 milligrams per meter squared, there's a higher likelihood of the anthracyclines causing problems with the pump function of the heart. But we generally don't use that amount in people getting breast cancer chemotherapy. How do we detect this? How do we make sure it doesn't happen? So most of the time, people starting on an anthracycline will get an echocardiogram or a MUGA test before they start their chemotherapy. In young, fit people, we don't always do that, but once somebody hits 50 years, still young, we do tend to lean towards offering a test to evaluate the pump function of the heart before we stop the, start the anthracyclines. In somebody whose pump function is reduced below, let's say 40%, we generally will 
pick something else or use a cardioprotective drug to decrease the toxicity from the anthracyclines on the heart. Both of those are options, picking an alternative, monitoring the heart midway, or using a cardioprotective agent, also given IV along with the chemotherapy, just prior to the chemotherapy. In people who have no other symptoms, we don't do a follow-up echocardiogram in people with breast cancer because, again, we don't go over that threshold where we start to see this happen in between one to three to five percent of people. So that's the cardiac pump function. This video was prompted by a comment from one of our viewers who's had other problems that are important, albeit much less common. And when they happen to you, it doesn't matter how many other people they happen, it happens to, it's happened to you. So two other problems are the valve problems and arrhythmias or changes in the rhythm. So valve problems can, in, can be either stiffening of the valve or floppiness of the valve. When it's stiffened, it's called stenosis. So you might hear of aortic valve stenosis, that's a thickening or a tightening, or you may hear of regurgitation, and that's when the valve is really floppy, and instead of closing and keeping the blood from flowing back, it actually opens with each beat, and the blood will rush in the wrong direction. So stenosis means the blood can't get across the valve, and in regurgitation, it's getting across the valve and then kind of swashing back, swishing back and forth, like something that's leakier. When we talk about a leaky valve, we tend to talk about regurgitation. When we're talking about a scarred valve or a stenotic valve, it's much tighter and closer. So, so we can see problems with the valves in people who've had anthracyclines. One of the reasons it's really hard to tell how many people this happens in is because we can have valve problems from all sorts of conditions and with just time. In fact, the most common cause of problems with the aortic valve is being born with a valve that has only two leaflets instead of the usual three. The aortic valve usually has three, and if somebody has just two, that's something they're born with. And we do tend to see that on that echocardiogram done before chemotherapy. Having two, valve, two leaflets of the valve does not increase the risk of valve problems, and we can't actually tell who will have problems with their valve. And again, it's really uncommon, fewer than 1% of people, but when it happens to you, it certainly is important. And I'll talk in a moment about the symptoms that we look out for in people who have had anthracyclines. And then the last thing is arrhythmia. So problems with the rhythm of the heart where it doesn't beat regularly, so there are pauses in the rhythm of the heart, or it beats more quickly, and that can be called fibrillation. Uh, we you can see that with you know um, ventricular tachycardia where the ventricle is beating too quickly, and then there can be dropped beats as well. And those we pick up when we feel your pulse, when we listen to your heart, and we'll often do an echocardiogram. If we are evaluating it more in depth, you might get hooked up with a 24-hour uh, echocardiogram called a Holter mon monitor, uh, beginning with a capital H. So then we can look at your uh, rhythm over 24 hours. And rhythm problems are uncommon, but they're known to happen. Again, all of these side effects occur the more drug, more anthracycline you get. And even if they're uncommon, one to 2%, they're important side effects. So what do we look for? How do we know this has happened? Well, after chemotherapy, we do tend to see people every three to four months for the first year or two, then every six months. And in fact, the cardiac problems tend to be in the first few years, though if people have other risk factors, the anthracyclines can increase their risk. I'd love you to check out our other video on cardiac health in people with breast cancer and undergoing breast cancer treatment to learn more about uh, how we monitor cardiac health and other risk factors for heart problems. But in general, when you're seen in follow-up, we ask things like, are you having shortness of breath? Are you having shortness of breath when you're lying down? Are you having swelling in your lower extremities, your feet, your lower legs, your thighs, your hands? And that might indicate problems with the pump. If you're having palpitations where you feel your heart beating rapidly or irregularly, that might indicate a problem with the rhythm. 
and then problems with the valves tend to look a lot like other cardiac problems, so shortness of breath and problems when you're exerting yourself, problems when you're lying down. All of that would lead to, of course, a good physical exam and then additional tests depending on the key concern that your medical team is having. There are treatments for all of these medical treatments, even surgical treatments. People who have cardiac problems from the anthracyclines will often be referred to a cardio-oncologist, who's a cardiologist who specializes in the care of people who have cancer or who have had cancer. I do just want to make a point that there are other things that can cause problems with the heart, and it's very common in people undergoing breast cancer and its treatment for everybody to attribute everything to the breast cancer and the chemotherapy or the radiation or the surgery. And this can mean that sometimes more common things like thyroid problems and uh, dietary issues like a lot of salt intake, um, you know, all of these things can cause the same symptoms and sometimes they're not thought of by the oncology team and it's actually the primary care team that thinks of common things being common. When we, we have a saying in medicine, when you hear hoof beats, think horses, not zebras. Now for an oncologist, cardiac dysfunction is a horse, but sometimes we forget the other horses that are out there. So it's just important to remember to stay in touch with your primary care doctor. If you don't have one, ask your oncologist who they would recommend because a whole team is really important to take care of your whole body. I've covered a lot today. I hope it's been helpful. If you have questions or comments, drop them below. Please be kind. We do try to get back in the first week or two after you put your comments in. We do reply to everybody. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Follow us on Instagram. And as always, you can go to yerba.com for your personalized report.